Carnation Evaporated Milk presents the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show. very much. You know, I've been in show business a lot of years. And I can usually look at an audience and tell immediately whether it's going to be a good audience or a bad audience. <laughs> this is the best audience I've ever played to. <laughs> and you know, when I tell you I've been in show business a lot of years, you can believe me. I used to do a singing act called Brown and Williams. I was brown. Then I did an act called Harrigan and Friend. I was friend. <laughs> Harrigan was a seal. <laughs> nice billing I got there. Then I did a dancing act called Goldie Fields and Glide. I was Glide. <laughs> then I finally did an act called Burns and Gary. I was Gary. <laughs> then I worked with a fella named Charlie Lowe. Charlie used to stutter a lot. The only time Charlie didn't stutter is when he'd sing. Funny thing, we played Altoona once, and I was upstairs rehearsing the music, and Charlie was downstairs unpacking our trunk, and he came up, and he was as white as a sheep. He was all excited, and he started to stutter, and he stammered, and he stuttered, and he said, J -j 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 and I said, Charlie, sing it. And he sang, we were just robbed. <laughs> Another thing that happened in Altoona, we used to do a number where Charlie would say, uh, Charlie said, I'll take her around the world to spend a honeymoon. And I said, I never knew the world was in the finest room. And he said, all she'll get is the best. I said, the sleeves from your best. And he said, oh, yes. And I said, no. And then we dance. See? <laughs> so all of a sudden, Charlie started to stutter on the word moon. He says, I'll take her around the world to spend a honeymoon. And I says, look, Charlie, I don't mind you stuttering in Altoona. But next week, we're playing New York City. We're playing the Jefferson Theater. And if we're a hit, we get five weeks' work. And if you stutter on the word moon, we go back to Weenix Restaurant. <laughs> That's the place where we hung out when we laid off. And Charlie said, D -d -d don't worry. He said, I, uh, I won't stutter. We got on the stage of the Jefferson, and Charlie said, I'll take her around the world to spend a honeymoon. And I never waited. I says, I never knew the world was in a furnished room. He said, all she'll get is the best. I said, the sleeves from your best. And he said, oh, yes. And I said, oh, no. And Charlie said, moon. <laughs> from there, we went to Phoenix. Well, maybe I'm worried about nothing. Maybe it's all in my imagination. Oh, sure it is. Come on, walk me home. <laughs> After all, I used to be Harry's secretary. That's how we met, you know. Oh, uh -huh, sure. And we used to work late, just like he's doing now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember the first night he called me in to take a little dictation. He... <laughs> I'll kill him. <laughs> he's chasing that secretary around the desk right now. Oh, Blanche, relax. If it were my husband, I wouldn't worry. Yeah, but my husband can catch her. <laughs> Gracie, what am I going to do? Well, I'll think of something. Come on, I'll walk you home. <laughs> oh, uh, how about how about appealing to his finer nature? What do you mean? Well, you say to Harry, you say, um, how about our children and see what he says? He'll say we haven't got any children. Uh, then you say, yeah, how about that? <laughs> Never let him get the last word. Uh, Gracie, I'm worried. Well, what about? Suppose the secretary has got a pretty face and a gorgeous figure. Look what you've got. What? You've got friends. Uh, thank you. Come on, walk me home. You know, Gracie, I've been married to that man for 11 years, and now I'll bet he's going to leave me for that blonde. Well, so what? In another 11 years, he'll get just as tired of her as he is of you. <laughs> Feel better now? 
<laughs> no, in fact, I feel just all... Hello, girl. Well, I thought you were going to work late at the office with your new secretary. Well, I caught up sooner than I expected. Mm -hmm. Well, I said you'd catch her. What? I I'll see you later. Yes, Blanche. dear. Bye, Gracie. And as for you, Harry Morton, I tell you plenty, if you aren't the woman who's my best friend's husband. <laughs> What goes on? Please, Harry. Not outside. Let's go in the house. I don't want the rest of the neighbors to know about our trouble. They know we live next door to Gracie. <laughs> that reminds me. I gotta get cleaned up. We're going to the Burns's for dinner tonight. Oh, are you taking me? Won't your blonde secretary be jealous? Blonde? My secretary happens to be a man. He's an old fraternity brother of mine. A man? But Gracie and oh, I thought Gracie that... Gracie again. She started all this. No, she didn't, Harry. If anything, I put the idea into her head. Blanche, you could put an idea into Gracie's head like you could put a basketball into a thimble. Now, Harry, I don't... Why doesn't she stay home with her husband? If you had that husband, would you stay home? <laughs> well, I wouldn't. I'd take him back to the judge that married me, and I'd say, look... I know I took him for better or for worse, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Doesn't deserve a wife like Gracie. Nobody does. I think Gracie is a very fine wife. You think? You thought my secretary was a woman. How wrong can you be? Wait a minute. How do I know I'm wrong? I'd like to see that man secretary of yours. All right, Blanche, I'll call him. We'll have him over for dinner and settle this whole thing. Oh, but Let's you can't do that. We're going to the Burns's for dinner. Good idea. I'd like to get Gracie to have a look at him, too. Well, you don't need to act so hurt. There are plenty of married men who are interested in pretty girls. Not me. I gave that up when I married you. What do you think? Is Harry's secretary really a man? Or is he just covering up? You know, George S. Kaufman is responsible for tonight's plot. I asked him to write it, and he said no, so I had to do it. But while we're waiting to find out, here's a dance I saw the other night. I think this kid is real good. Ladies and gentlemen, Harrison Muller. <laughs> Harrison, that was swell. Thanks a lot, Mr. Burns. You know, I love to watch you kids dance. Of course, you kids nowadays get away with murder. When, when, I, when I danced in vaudeville, you know, you, you couldn't loaf. You really had to dance. Would you like to have a little challenge dance? Yeah, that would interest me. <coughs> a little challenge dance. Would you like to bet a dollar? Well, look, Harrison, before you start betting, I better warn you that I happen to be Glide of Goldie, Fields, and Glide. <laughs> Do you still want a better dollar? No, uh, let's make it five dollars. Okay, Harrison, but not to embarrass you in front of the audience, I'm going to do all my tough stuff off stage. Take it, Harrison. Stop. 
five, I mean. <laughs> Bob Fosse, come out here. There's your five dollars, Bob. You. <laughs> hey, this is something. We look like Goldie Fields and Glide. <laughs> okay, Harry, one, two, three, four. <laughs> enjoyed that. And Harrison, a little carnation milk for you. Bob, a little carnation milk from you. Compliments from our sponsor. Oh, gee, thank you very much. Mm. Uh, uh, who is your sponsor? Crowley's Umbrella. <laughs> well, they're, they're pretty smart people to give you this. Carnation's wonderful milk. Yeah, that Crowley's a smart boy. <laughs> Goodbye, fellas, and hold on to your tap shoes. Hello. Bye. 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 You know, I, I worked up a little appetite for dinner here. And uh, by the way, we're having some roast beef. I'll let you in on a little secret, how Gracie fixes roast beef. She buys two roasts, a big roast and a small roast. She puts them both in the oven. When the little roast starts burning, the smoke reminds her that the big one is done. <laughs> you know, I can't wait for Harry Morton to come over. Okay, excuse me, please. Hello? Oh, hello, Harry. Oh, sure, it's perfectly okay. Seven o'clock sharp. Goodbye. There'll be an extra for dinner, Gracie. Harry Morton is bringing over secretary. What did you say? I said Harry Morton is bringing over secretary. Well, the nerves of that man. That's the blonde hussy who's breaking up their home. And now he's bringing her over here to break up ours. <laughs> What? Oh, George Burns, I'll be watching you. And if you so much as take her on your lap and kiss her, I won't speak to you for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Look, uh, will you let me in on this? Oh, poor Blanche, but that's a, that's a man for you. Now, you take all the fickle husbands in the world, and I'll bet you that 90% of them are men. <laughs> the other 10% are handled by our agent, I oh. guess. Oh, no wonder, no wonder women do terrible things. Men drive them to it. And you take that, that woman who murdered her husband, uh, the one the jury just freed. Why, she Wait was... a minute, wait. She was freed by the jury? Well, naturally. They felt sorry for her. She was a widow. <laughs> well, naturally, yes. And besides, she had to kill him. She needed his insurance money to bury him. <laughs> well, I'm glad that she didn't spend it foolishly. Oh, man. Those terrible creatures, those... I'm certainly glad... Uh, George, take the powder puff out of my pocket. The part of my nose. Uh, how do I look? Pretty. Oh, now, where was I? Men. Oh, yeah. Men, those Atta terrible... Atta girl, now you <laughs> Well, believe me, I'm glad my sister Hazel is only two-thirds married. Hazel is only two-thirds married? Well, sure, only she and the minister showed up. <laughs> Oh, yes, I remember the groom couldn't get away from his wife. I remember? Oh, yes, vividly, vividly, yes. Oh, men. Look, Gracie, uh, I know that you're all worked up, but I wouldn't let this get out of the house, because if it does, you're going to be laughed at. Yeah, let them laugh. They laugh at all intelligent women. They even laughed at Joan of Arc, but she went right ahead and built it. <laughs> built, built what? The Ark. The ark was built by a man. <laughs> the person who built the ark was a woman. Noah. How could I know? She's been dead for years. <laughs> Gracie, don't you think you ought to finish dinner? I'm not going to cook for that blonde wolverine. 
You stir that. Okay, I'll stir it. I don't know what you're so excited Believe about. Believe me. I, in the George, first place, you're stirring it the wrong way. You'll unwind it. <laughs> well, my cooking teacher happened to be left-handed. Oh. And Gracie, I'm sorry you feel that way about men. Oh, well, George, there's nothing personal. You're my husband. I don't think of you as a man. <laughs> You know, Gracie didn't mean that the way she said it. And she's really not as silly as she sounds. And she loves me. Just the other day, she said, George, I wouldn't trade you for Gregory Peck. She is a little silly, isn't she? <laughs> you know, I really can't wait for Morton to get here with the secretary. Uh, this ought to be a... Oh, no. No, she's too young. It couldn't be. Oh, there's Bill Goodwin. He'll find out. Pardon me. I'm looking for the Burns residence. Oh, the Burns house? Well, this is it. Come on in. Oh, pardon me. I got to open the door. I'm here to get an interview for my high school paper. Oh? My, you're certainly better looking than people say you are, Mr. Burns. Oh, I'm not Mr. Burns. I'm Bill Goodwin. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. Oh, what does Mr. Burns look like? George? Oh, for a man his age who's been through as much as he has, he looks terrible. <laughs> really? Yeah, very bad. Oh, Hi. Well, come right in, miss. How are you, George? Fine. Nice work, well, Harry. Wonderful. Say, George, this young lady wants to interview you for her school paper. Oh? Meet Miss... Uh... Bogio, Geraldine Bogio. I'm a student at Chadwick. How do you do? I've looked forward to seeing you in person for a long time, Mr. Burns. Surprised at the way I look? Oh, no. Mr. Goodwin told me what to expect. <laughs> well, you know me always trying to give a build-up to the boss. Uh, yes, yes. For a man my age, I look pretty terrible, don't I? That's <laughs> the acoustics in here. Sit down, Miss oh. Bojo. Thank you. Yes. I'll get right to the interview if it's all right. All right. I have to be back at Chadwick in time for my home economics class. All right. Now, I was born on the east home side economics. of New York. I say, that's cooking, isn't it? Yes. Yes. I was born well, on the east side. Tell me, do you use of... carnation evaporated milk in your cooking class? Naturally. Naturally. I was and born on the east side. And they tell you, of course, that carnation is the milk from contented cows. Sure. Sure. Now I was and born on the east side. And no other of form of milk had so many wonderful uses. Of course. Well, <laughs> go ahead, George. This girl has to get back to her cooking class. I was born on the east side. I was born on Carnation the east side. Carnation is great. <laughs> Carnation is just good whole milk with nothing added but vitamin D. That's the sunshine vitamin. And nothing taken away but water. Bill, Gracie would like to see you in the kitchen. Oh, all right. He's coming right in. Hurry, Bill. Now. I was born on the east side of New York. I got into show business when I was seven years old. I joined a quartet called the Pee Wee Quartet. And every Friday night, we would go on amateur night at a place called Miner's Bowery. One Friday night, am I, am I going too fast for you? What? Have you got what I said? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Burns. I was writing what Mr. Goodwin said about carnation milk. Would you start again, please? I was born on the east side of hey, New York. Hey, look. I've got a demonstration here that you can use in your cooking class. Now, carnation evaporated milk, just as it pours from the can, can be used instead of cream. It whips just like cream. Then, when you want milk, you just add an equal amount of water. Now, there you have milk that costs about one-third less than bottled milk. Isn't that wonderful? I'll make a note of that. Good. <laughs> oh. I I'm sorry, George. I... I just got carried away again. Miss Bozio, you listen to every word he says. Now, I was born on the east side of New George. York. <laughs> yes? What kind of life savers do you like best? Wither green, spearmint, or peppermint? Peppermint? Why? Well, I wanted to know what kind you use. I'm making a hot mince pie. <laughs> Oh, 
I was born on the east side of New York. I started the show business when I was seven years old. I joined Hello? a quartet called the Pee Wee Quartet. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Burns is busy right now. Do you think he'd call back a little later? Yes, that'd be wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay, goodbye. It was too noisy. I couldn't hear a thing. Would you please start again? I was born on the east side of... I wasn't born at all. I just died. <laughs> Kiss and chat with the look. Hello, Hello. 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 Come on in. You look so happy. What's going on? Hello. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. <laughs> Say, George, yes. I, I'd like you to meet my new secretary, Jim Benson. Pleasure, Mr. Benson. Hello, Mr. Burns. Uh, I thought your secretary was a woman. So did Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Gracie, everybody's here. All right, dear. Coming right in with the order. Mr. Burns, perhaps I'd better come back another time. I think that's a pretty well, good on, idea. Everybody. Hey, Gracie. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, you're the girl Harry Morton's chasing after. Gracie, this is Harry's secretary. Oh, really? Well, you're silly to chase after him. She's much prettier. <laughs> Call you, Mr. Burns. Okay, goodbye. Oh, Ms. don't go. Please stay and have dinner with us. Bye. Oh, good. Who's that? <laughs> I'll explain later. This is Mr. Benson, Mrs. Burns. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Help yourself. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Bill? Oh, thank you, Gracie. Oh, I just love these little sausages. They're even better when they're smoked. Oh, well, here, I'll light one for you. <laughs> no, thank you. Harry? Thank you, Gracie. Mmm, delicious. What is it? It's a toothpick. <laughs> Glenn? Thank you, dear. Oh, I had a letter from my mother today. Oh, how is everybody? Well, my mother said that last week my father had all his teeth taken out, and tomorrow she's putting in a new carpet. Mr. Uh, Benson, Mr. Gallo? Oh, thank you, George. Fine. Okay. Willie? Thank you. Well, now, Harry? Uh, how about some entertainment? Oh, that was so wonderful. All right. Uh, let's all go in the other room. In the other room? Yes, that's where the piano is, and we'll hear George sing. Okay, let's all go. The song would be nice. <laughs> hey, Bill. Ah. You know, when Jim Benson and I were in college together, we went to Europe one summer. Really? Yeah, yeah. just to it. Oh, yeah. you know, last year, George and I went to Europe. Oh, yeah, travel is so educational. You know, you learn so much. Yes, you've really got to see it to know it. Yes. Were you in Paris? Well, I don't know. George always bought the tickets. <laughs> yes, we were in Paris. We traveled around a lot, went to all the small hotels. Matter of fact, it was sort of a second honeymoon for us. <laughs> Did you get behind the Iron Curtain? No, this time we dressed right in the same room. George, <laughs> these are just wonderful. I thought you'd like them. Yeah. Oh, I've got a wonderful idea. What? How would you like to see a card trick? A oh, card trick? Really? Yeah. All yeah. right, so get a deck of cards in there, and could I borrow your handkerchief? Yeah, sure. And, oh, right on the mantel, you'll find a scissors. Scissors? Oh, that's, that's a good handkerchief. Oh, trick. don't worry. My father showed me this years ago. Your father? Oh, yeah, yeah. You'll love trick. it, so you'll hold it, will you? Yeah. Oh, thank it. you very right. much. This is really the best trick you ever saw. Now, wait. <laughs> I wish my father were here. What's that? Uh, well, come on, let's all go in the other room here, George Sings. Come on. Let's go, here he sings. Well, I'm going in to get my ukulele. Well, looks like Sugar Throat's going to sing. Got any cotton in your pocket, Harry? I don't think he sings that bad. You me that bad. It's just sheer murder, but at least we'll get a free dinner out of it. Is he really that bad? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Mrs. Burns, I've never heard your husband sing. Oh, my husband has a beautiful Is voice. Is so? Yes, come on over here and we'll listen to us. Yes. Right down here. Oh, quiet, everybody, quiet. George is going to sing. I don't care what it is. It's so creamy that it's just... <clears throat> from time to time in every climb, blessings come from above. Oh, I love you, love. I 
I told him all in all, I have much to be thankful for. God to be back in just a minute. In fact, just as soon as they finish dinner, folks. Right now, I want to tell you about a special favorite, and that's cream soup. Cream of, cream of chicken soup, cream of mushroom soup, cream of tomato soup. We don't care what kind of soup it is, just so it's cream. Now, if you want to make cream soup that's really delicious, always cream it with carnation evaporated milk. It's so easy to cream your favorite canned soup with carnation. Just follow the regular directions on the can. There they are right here. But instead of ordinary milk, use carnation milk mixed with an equal amount of water. And for an even creamier soup, use less water or use carnation undiluted. Now remember, carnation milk, as it pours from the can, is more than double rich. So you can use it just like cream in coffee and for most cream recipes. Yes, even whipped toppings. Even when you mix it half and half with water, carnation is still richer than your state standard for bottled milk, yet it costs about one-third less. So get several cans of carnation tomorrow and watch your milk bill go down. And now here's our contented couple, George and Gracie. Will you come over here? Yes. Yeah. Yes, you might as well stay at this, uh, play this way. We started off this way a lot of years ago. Uh, Thank you very much. You were charming, and uh, Gracie and I will be back again in two weeks. And Gracie, I want to tell you that your, your dinner tonight was delicious. Did you like it? I loved it, uh, especially that chocolate-covered dessert. Oh, well, I know how you love chocolate. You always said that you could eat sawdust if there was enough chocolate on it. That's right. And you can, too. <laughs> Don't tell me. Mm-hmm, two helpings. <laughs> Say good night. Good night. That's it. the program was Camilla DeWitt as Geraldine Boschio. Our music director was Harry Zaznick. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show will be back in two weeks. Stay tuned now for The Show Goes On with Robert Q. Lewis on most of these stations. This is Bill Goodwin speaking for Carnation. Bye. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.